Hey guys, even here, and in today's video we got some really interesting physique updates, we're gonna start with Rubial Muscara at about 14 weeks out of Dubai Pro, and yeah, he is doing this one, Chris Cormier confirmed this, and he says he's definitely doing this one, he's not pulling out like he pulled out of Arnold and Arnold UK, and then I guess New York, so he's doing Dubai Pro, and that's pretty much for sure. Now as far as his physique right now, I mean, do I really need to say much? He does look extremely freaky right now. Now, of course, his neck is not any smaller, nor is his wee taper any better, but as far as muscularity, as far as fullness and size and all that, he's good, he's great. He did lose some of that, like, after the show, because he relaxed for a little bit, but now he's got back all the size, all the fullness, all the roundness, he looks like an absolute freak once again. And the thing with this guy is he starts to look much more impressive, much more freaky once he gets shredded because he has so much muscle and when he's dieting down, he doesn't really lose any of that size, any of that fullness. He just gets harder, more detailed and he just keeps getting freakier and freakier and I believe the next time we see him on stage, he's going to be an improved version of himself. We need to keep in mind that the last time he was on a pro stage, it was his pro debut. And it wasn't a pro debut after a year of off-season. No, it was a pro debut right after he turned pro the next day. And now he had a little bit of an off-season. And with improvements in posing, which I think Chris Cormier is gonna help him a lot with, he actually, I believe he actually can pull a win at a Dubai Pro. I mean, yeah, I know Andrew Jack is doing it, so... It's gonna be extremely difficult, it's most likely not gonna happen, it's probably gonna be Andrew Jack who takes the win, but if anybody is gonna give Andrew Jack to run for his money, it will be this guy, this new freak, one of the freakiest, if not the freakiest bodybuilder of today, right now. One of the biggest things, the biggest problems of Nexilla is his posing, and I don't think he should do this kind of classic poses in his posing routine, even though posing routine is not really judged, if he wants to leave a good impression, I think he should just let Andrew Jack do his artsy uh, classic poses, and this guy should stick with like a whole bunch of uh, most muscular variations, because that's where his strength is, you know, muscularity, freakiness, not classic lines, not even by a long shot. However, some mandatory poses could be improved if they were actually done in a more, well, I don't want to say classic way, but in a better way, because the way he's hitting his front double bicep is the way boxers are hitting it, or like five-year-old boys when you tell them to flex their biceps, so he's not putting any effort into it, he just lifts his arms up and he flexes the biceps. As far as I know, Chris Cormier is over there with Rubio right now, they are both in Spain, and I don't know why they're not changing this, why are they not practicing posing? I mean, if he tilted his uh, hips backwards a little bit here, if he stood on one leg and lifted the other a little bit and maybe tried like bending the arm at the elbow a little bit more, a little bit less, you know, there is so much things he can try and do. I doubt this is the best variation of the front double bicep for Nexilla. So, yeah, I think if he perfects his posing and makes his physique a little bit more pleasing, a little bit more aesthetic, and gets even more conditioned, which will probably be more conditioned than Andrew Jack from behind, Andrew Jack really never had straighted glutes and hamstrings, so if Rubial improves conditioning and posing, and comes a little bit improved in terms of muscularity, yeah, I think he's gonna give Andrew Jack a run for his money at Dubai Pro. But let's not forget the other guys who are doing this show, for example, Beharus Tabani, who is gonna be a freak as well, I'm sure there will be other heavy hitters because the prize money is third best in the world right now. So we'll see, it's gonna be very interesting, but Nexilla is coming strong. In 8 weeks from now, at Ampro Cup 2024, Spain, William Bonek is gonna have his comeback at that show. Now, as far as other competitors doing this show, we have Michal Krijo and we have Bekrus Tabani as of right now. And William Bonak is coming back, it's been a while since we saw this guy on stage, he had some injuries, some issues, and he wasn't really looking his best the last few shows he's done, so I think he decided to retire, then he decided to come back, and this show is gonna be his comeback, and we'll see what he's gonna look like, I mean, 
Going against Grigio, I mean, personally, I, I do have Grigio as the favorite to win that show, even with Bonac doing this show. He was posting these physique updates for a while now, I haven't really reported on them because they are always the same, it's the same spot like this one and it's always the same everything, he just gets a little bit leaner every week which is really hard to notice any changes, and yeah in 8 weeks from now he's gonna be on stage, if he looks anything like he looked back in 2019 for example, where he plays second at the Arnold Classic and second at the Mr. Olympia to Brandon Curry. Yeah, he won the Arnold Classic twice, uh, and I think he won the Arnold Classic Australia once, but I think his best look was 2019, where he plays second to Brandon Curry. It was debatable. I personally had him winning this show. Uh, at the Mr. Olympia also he looked amazing. I think he looked better at the Arnold, or the lighting was just better. Anyways, this edition, this version of Bonac from 2019 i think this edition would win Ampro cup against Grigio and behrus tabani but how likely is it for bonek to come back and look this good i better be careful what i say about william bonek because i'm planning on doing his show william bonek classic uh, this december so i can't be too harsh on william bonek but really i mean this physique update right now does it look like uh, what he looked like back in 2019 I think back looks downsized a little bit, maybe his legs from behind and I would say from the front, I don't know, he had an injury in one of the legs, I think a hamstring tear, but I mean his quads look back, uh, from behind it's a little bit different, as far as the upper body fullness, I don't know, it looks, uh, one lat seems bigger than the other, maybe it's just the angle, uh, he seems pretty big, he seems back like the way he used to look when he was at his peak we'll see what his stomach actually looks better now for some reason we'll see what he's gonna look like once he's dieted down once he's completely shredded and like ready for the stage then we'll see any weaknesses any flaws but really we're gonna be comparing this version to his previous version to his all-time best version of course uh, in this physique update it does kind of seem to me like he did lose some of that pop some of that fullness in the shoulders, maybe arms, maybe chest, but it's really hard to assess this accurately until we see him on stage, I mean, he will probably be at least, at least 80% of himself, I think, and is he that good to be able to beat Grigio at 80%, I don't think so, I think he needs to be at least 90-95, if not 100%, to beat these guys in Windy Show and qualify for the Mr. Olympia. I know he wants really bad to get back to that Mr. Olympia stage, but will he be able to? What do you guys think? Tell me down below. All right, next up, we got a very impressive physique update of Tim Buresheim at four weeks out of what? You're wondering. Of course, New York Pro. So many bodybuilders want to compete for that second at the New York Pro, want to have a chance to stand next to Nick Walker, it's crazy, I mean, it's awesome, I thought this show is gonna be empty, I thought everybody is gonna be just scared, and they'll walk away, I thought they wouldn't, you know, waste a peak week, a show just to place, but I guess this New York Pro is turning out to be somewhat like Arnold Classic, or like Mr. Olympia, these bodybuilders are signing up to do it, even though they know they can't win, they just want to be seen on a big stage like that, which does make sense now when I think about it, but yeah, I mean, Nick Walker is definitely going to win that show, but with so many bodybuilders prepping and, you know, aiming to be their best for that show, it's not going to be easy for Nick, he needs to be 100%, and that is exactly what he's planning on doing. Now, as far as Tim Bodesheim right here, I mean, he looks nuts, he looks really impressive, really freaking thick, really dense, really big, pretty conditioned for four weeks out, I think, really conditioned, and you know, the thing with this guy is, like, he is massive, and he does get shredded, but on stage, he never looks quite as good as he does on his Instagram photos, because of his structure, now, he is heavy, he's, like, I don't know, 260, maybe even more, on stage, but with his shape, it doesn't really look that good, I mean, compare his waist size to Nathan's, and then his waist to quads ratio, and then his waist to shoulders ratio, and the way his lats are popping out, like, he's pretty flat everywhere, he's just a big uh, brick of muscle, 
pretty flat, not a good wee taper. So, I mean, he tried to qualify for the Mr. Olympia last year, and he brought his best. Like, he was really good. He was really massive. He was really conditioned, but it just wasn't enough. I mean, these guys, the other guys are just as big, and they have prettier shape, like Nathan Diasha, like Roman Fritz also. As you can see, Roman, I mean, he's... I think he's smaller than Tim, but he has a smaller waist, wider shoulders, his uh, quads are popping out more, you know, his shape overall, his structure is simply better. Though it does seem like Tim took it to another level, this is a little bit older for it, I believe, so as you can see here, really added some density, some thickness, you know, he looks really freaky, but again, this is a gym photo, the lighting here is probably perfect, he's pumped, he's full, probably... And he's not hitting a front lat or a front double or a back double. He's hitting most muscular, which always looks good for him on stage even. So, yeah, even though this is looking super impressive, I don't think it's going to look that impressive on stage. But he's a great addition to the New York Pro. So many popular big name guys are doing this show. New York Pro is going to be stacked and it's going to be great. All right, and for the end, we got a little physique update, off-season update of Patrick Moore. Finally, it's not a throwback photo. And this one was posted by his coach, Dom Cardone. I don't know if Patrick would post this himself. He likes to post only the photos when he's shredded. And um, here in the caption, so Dom Cardone says, making phenomenal progress uh, pretty rapidly uh, during this improvement season. We have plenty of time to keep the progress uh, before... Uh, we, we start the prep and so on. I mean, I hope Patrick Moore is actually making progress because it seemed like that multiple times, but then on stage he always ends up looking the same and actually worse than that one year when he placed 10th at the Mr. Olympia 2019, the weakest Mr. Olympia lineup in years. So, I mean, is he ever going to get back to that level, top 10 at the Mr. Olympia? I mean, the way things are right now at the Mr. Olympia, no. I don't see that happening ever. No matter how conditioned he gets, I don't think he can make that many improvements. I don't think he can get that big to be that good. 2019 was like a very weak year, and I mean, he got in that top 10 based on shape and, and conditioning, but ever since, he was never really able to repeat that conditioning, and he didn't really gain any size. But in the comment there, he says, yes, sir, and he puts a clock emoji. Like, clock is ticking. Because in all of his captions, he for the last five years, he has been writing the caption, it's only the matter of time. Time is ticking. Bomb is ticking. You know, it's only the matter of time when I'm going to come back and destroy everybody and like become the best in the world. Or I don't know, something like that. But it seems to never happen. He keeps staying the same, actually worse than that one year when he basically became popular, 2019. So I do not have high hopes for Patrick Moore, I am a fan of his physique, that one version, 2019, that was a really good version, but is he ever going to be able to repeat that, or improve on that, I don't know, I don't know, whatever you guys think, tell me down below, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and for more content like this, about bodybuilding guys, please subscribe to this channel, thank you so much for watching, see you soon guys, all the best, and bye bye.